Solar Batteries 101, a beginner's guide to understanding batteries, 2022 edition. Are you thinking of going solar and wondering whether you need a battery too? Or maybe you already have solar and want to know what's involved with adding a battery. Well, I've developed this three-part Battery 101 beginner's guide to get you up to speed as quickly as possible. Part one, this video goes through the fundamentals of home batteries. Part two, buying batteries is full of useful information to help you buy the right solution for the right price. And part three, owning batteries sets expectations for your battery powered lifestyle. If understanding batteries is not a priority for you, no worries, simply skip to part two of this guide using the link I've put in the description for practical advice on buying batteries. Okay, let's get to it. Point number one, why get a battery? Well, there's a number of reasons why you'd want to add a battery to your home. Let's go through them. Reason one, to use your solar after sundown. Batteries let you store solar energy generated during the day for use at night. With a battery, you'll import less energy from the grid and thus pay less money to your electricity retailer every quarter on your power bills. Reason two, to benefit from time of use electricity tariffs. Time of use tariffs are becoming more popular and may even become mandatory at some point. These tariffs slug you with high per kilowatt hour charges during the late afternoon and evening, for example, between five and 9 p.m., when demand on the electricity grid peaks. If you don't have a battery, time of use tariffs are likely to substantially increase your bills. But an appropriately sized battery with enough solar can power you through these peak periods. So you can dodge most or all of the peak pricing period. You then benefit from off peak pricing later at night if your battery runs out before sunrise. Some battery systems like Tesla are smart enough to top up with off peak grid electricity where it makes sense. For example, if it looks like there won't be enough sunshine to charge it the following day. Reason three, backup. Some, but not all batteries, will also back up important circuits in your home. If a blackout hits, you can ride it out in style, just like I did. Reason four, join a virtual power plant. Owning a battery allows you to join a virtual network of other battery owners called a virtual power plant or VPP. Together, you can use your combined battery capacity to support the grid by charging and discharging when the grid needs support. This helps integrate more renewables into Australia's grid and you can get paid for your ongoing help too. Point number two, how do batteries work? An anatomy of a battery system. A battery is an electrochemical sandwich used to store energy. One bread slice is the negative anode and the other is the positive cathode. Between them is a filling called the electrolyte and a separator. Negatively charged electrons concentrate at the anode. Because opposites attract, they want to go to the positively charged cathode. The filling blocks electrons from taking the short path through the battery. Connecting the anode and cathode with wire allows electrons to flow through it. This flow of electrons is what we harness as electricity. In rechargeable batteries, you use an external energy source to reverse the flow of the current. This stores that energy for later use. There are many ways to arrange the sheets of cathode, anode, and separator in a modern lithium ion solar battery. They are usually constructed like a jam roll inside metal cylinders called cells. A home energy storage system can have thousands of these battery cells. Point number three, ensure your battery has enough power and enough energy. In part one of my Solar 101 guide, which I've linked to in the description, I explain the fundamental difference between power in kilowatts and energy in kilowatt hours. It's really important to understand this. When it comes to batteries, a useful analogy is water flowing through a pipe into a container. Power, kilowatts, is how fast the water flows through the pipe, into or out of the container. Energy, kilowatt hours, is the amount of water the container can hold. This is why understanding the difference between power and energy is super important. It can mean the difference between choosing the right battery for your needs and a dud. There are all kinds of batteries out there, each with its own combination of power output versus energy stored. 
As an example, compare the time it takes for these four batteries to discharge fully. You'd have a tough time running any major appliance off an end phase battery. Most batteries have a maximum continuous power output of five kilowatts. My Tesla Powerwall, for example, has a five kilowatt output. If I ever want 10 kilowatt power output from my battery system, I need to add a second battery. Be aware of the power and energy needs of your home when choosing a home battery. If your solar battery can only provide three kilowatts and your home needs five kilowatts, you'll need to get the power shortfall from the grid. For example, I have a finished sauna in my home that pulls seven kilowatts. I can't run it entirely off my power wall because that only outputs five kilowatts. That means I can't use my sauna in a blackout. What a hardship. Point number four, lead acid, lithium ion, flow. What battery technology should you choose? Until 2015, if you wanted to install a battery, you were most likely living in a rural area and looking to go off grid. The dominant technology up to then was lead acid. It required a big, heavy bank of batteries installed in a dedicated room, usually a shed, and regular maintenance. Not exactly set and forget. Since then, advances in lithium ion tech have resulted in lithium ion batteries dominating the market for a few reasons. Superior performance. They have better power output and depth of discharge. They're a set and forget maintenance free operation. They have longer warranties. Their pricing is competitive. They're smaller and lighter than most other technologies. Because of this, most home battery installations are using some variant of lithium ion tech these days. The two major lithium ion technologies are nickel manganese cobalt, NMC, and lithium iron phosphate, LIFEPO. The Tesla Powerwall, for example, uses NMC cells. People always ask me about alternative technologies like nickel iron or flow batteries. I'm yet to see an alternative technology beat lithium ion in both performance and price. So what battery technology should you choose? Unless your home has specialized needs, lithium ion will be the way to go. Point number five, adding a battery to your solar, AC versus DC coupling. As explained in my Solar 101 guide, solar panels output DC electricity, but the appliances in your home use AC electricity. The job of a solar inverter is to convert the DC from the panels into AC used in your home. Batteries charge and discharge DC electricity. So how do you integrate a battery into a solar system? Well, there are two ways. The first is DC coupling. You generally use a single hybrid inverter for both the solar panels and the battery, which contains a DC to DC converter. This converts the DC current from the solar into DC that can charge the battery. Hybrid inverters used for DC coupling are more expensive than regular solar inverters. For example, the Fronius Gen 24 hybrid inverter is 50% more expensive than a non-hybrid Fronius. The other way to integrate a battery is through AC coupling. With AC coupling, you need two inverters, a solar inverter and a special battery inverter, which converts the AC output of the solar inverter back into DC to charge the battery. Some battery options, such as the Tesla Powerwall, come with a battery inverter built in. The Powerwall can only be AC coupled. Others, like the LG Chem, need an external battery inverter to be installed on the wall next to them. So what are the advantages and disadvantages of DC coupling versus AC coupling? Well, there are fewer stops along the way with a DC coupled system. Fewer stops equals fewer losses equals higher efficiency. But batteries pair with specific hybrid inverters when they're DC coupled. So a spiffy new battery may not be compatible with the hybrid inverter you buy today. This isn't an issue if you're planning on buying a solar and battery system in one hit. The advantage of AC coupling is that it is solar inverter agnostic. You can retrofit an AC coupled battery to any existing solar power system. The downside is that there are more stops with the DC to AC to DC conversion, so it's a little less efficient. Another drawback of AC coupling is rules on system sizing from your local electricity network, and they may limit what you're allowed to install. For example, SA power networks allows a maximum of 10 kilowatts of inverter capacity per phase. Unless you can get an exemption, 
they count battery inverters towards this 10 kilowatt limit. Let's say you have an existing 7 kilowatt solar system with a 6 kilowatt inverter. You want to add a Tesla Powerwall, which has a 5 kilowatt inbuilt battery inverter. SA Power Networks may say you can't, because the 6 kilowatt solar inverter plus the 5 kilowatt Powerwall battery inverter equals 11 kilowatts of total inverter capacity. DC coupling bypasses this limit because there's only one inverter that handles both the battery and solar. So, how much will it cost to add a battery to a solar system? Well, my battery storage comparison table, linked in the description, lists the prices of various batteries. Importantly, listed prices do not include the cost of installation or the cost of extra electronics, such as a battery inverter. This can mean a six grand battery winds up costing 10 grand installed. If you already have an existing solar system with a hybrid inverter that's compatible with the battery you want, you may save a grand or two. Point number six, how do batteries save you money? Batteries store surplus solar energy for use at night, meaning you charge your battery with free electricity generated during the day. At night, instead of drawing from the grid, use the energy stored in your battery. If you're on a time of use electricity plan, you may be able to dodge the evening peak price period altogether. With a big enough solar and battery system, you may never pay an electricity bill again. If you're part of a virtual power plant, VPP, your batteries also support the grid and can earn credits, which can be thought of as a bonus feed-in tariff for doing so. But what's the catch in all this? Well, the cost of enough battery storage to completely cover your electricity bill is high. The bigger your bill, the bigger the battery you'd need. I go into more detail in part two of this battery guide, but to use a simple example, a 15 grand Tesla Powerwall will save, best case, $900 per year. It's up to you to decide whether it's worth spending 15 grand to save 900 annually and have backup. Phew, well that brings us to the end of part one of this guide. Next up is part two, everything you need to know when buying solar batteries. I've put a link to it in the video description. And I'll just take a moment to say that I've been running the website Solar Quotes for the last 12 years. In that time, I've built a great network of pre-vetted installers that can give you quotes for solar or batteries for your home. So if you're considering solar or batteries, just visit my website, solarquotes.com.au. Pop your postcode into the top right box, fill in the form, and I'll do my absolute best to match you with up to three installers I trust in your area. See you in part two.